So Joanne, thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we go into leadership, please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Where did you grow up? Um, well, I'm Joanne Barnwell, 37 years old at the moment, residing in Johannesburg. I am from a small dort called Marmesfri, and it's about an hour away from the city of Cape Town. And that is where I spend most of my life. I'm matriculated, my parents still live there, a lot of my friends still do, but it was just too small for me. I had to get out. I needed to spread my wings, and unfortunately, going back and I love going to see my hometown and giving back to my hometown but I know that all my friends and most of my family they're still there because unfortunately it's a place where your dreams get crushed it's you don't see the the future you don't see the light it's all about living in this small community and not going any further so for mom is free I am a bit of the success story so what was your dream career as you grew up you know that's the problem growing up i didn't have role models mm -hmm. or people telling me this is the, the the career you need to go on there was no guidance mm -hmm. per se from coming from those small little towns it was more about survival mm -hmm. survive each day taking each day as it comes getting through to matric And once you get to matric, then go and study. And all you wanted to do is get out of Mama's Free to go study in Cape Town and have opportunities and possibilities. So honestly, when I was growing up, I didn't know what I wanted to be because I took every day as it came. So tell us a little bit more about the environment at Mountsbury. <laughs> um, I assume that it's a, it's a gang. Is it a gang ridden town or a gang ridden place? It's not gang ridden it's more drugs definitely drugs and it's a big issue in in these small towns because also the small towns are often forgotten we've forgotten about it because you're not on top of mind mm -hmm. um the everybody that needs to look after the cities they just forget that small towns exist so you as parents you as um role models you need to you need to go in and give those kids motivation to, to strive for more. So who inspired you in those early days? I have to say my mother. She was quite a, a, a strong, she is a strong woman. She was my foundation for me to build on. She was solid, she was strong, she was... Uh, um, She is strong. She's a she's a quite a phenomenal woman, and she pushed me into because she clearly saw that there is something within Joanne. Not that she didn't push her other kids, but she pushed me even harder to succeed. And and if it wasn't for her and her pushing and perseverance and making sure that I attend classes and making sure that she exposed me to as much as she possibly couldn't afford. Mm. I would not have been here today. So when you finished school, where mm. did you go? So I then moved to Cape Town. I went to go study in Cape Town at Boston Computer College. And I went to go study a secretarial diploma because also that was all that we could afford. I couldn't go to university. I couldn't apply for bursaries because my grades were not A's or, or um, plus A's. So unfortunately, that was all that my parents could afford. And I believe you started your career at Vodacom. I did, but I did many things before Vodacom. I mean, I'm like a lucky packet. <laughs> like somebody that can basically do anything as long as I put my mind and head to it, you know. So my first job was actually at OK Furnitures. I don't think they exist anymore. And I was a sales lady because my mom said, you can't sit at home during school holidays. You need to go work. Um, so that's her way of also keeping you out of trouble. That was her way of making sure that I was busy all the time. So I worked on the Trans Lux bus as a bus hostess. Right. Hated it. Spilled coffee all over me. <laughs> over um, you and the passengers? All over me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And... And then I worked at OK Furnitures as a sales lady, which I also at the beginning hated because I told my mother, how am I going to sell a 10,000 rand fridge to someone? How do you do that? She says, I do not care, but you're not sitting at home. 
I went, I had no choice. She dropped me off at work in the morning. You're going to work. And as soon as my mindset changed, like Joanne, you don't have a choice. You have to make this work. So you're in the situation to so make the best out of it. And then I started excelling, became sales lady of the month, of the year, because now my mindset changed. Mm-hmm. I needed to make a success out of it. And I'm not going to do something and fail at, fail it either. So, yeah. Now, and when did you decide to actually run and compete for Miss South Africa? Mrs. So Mrs. So the South Africa. Married woman. Yes, ah, Mrs. Right. South Africa. So, while I was while I was obviously growing up in the small town, there was a Mr. Gomez that came from Cape Town. On a Saturday, he used to be in our school hall and he used to give boredom and Latin classes. So I promise you, I did everything. Karate, violin, ballet, played the piano mm. because my mom kept me busy mm. and out of trouble, which I'm so grateful for. Mm. And another thing she pushed me into, I was six, seven years old. She said, Jan, you're going to go dance. I don't want to dance. It's a Saturday. It's the only day that I have off. I want to play with my friends in the streets. No, Joanne, you're going to dance. Okay. I'm still petrified of my mother. I'm a grown woman and I'm still petrified of her. You're going to dance. And I went to go dance. And also, again, I had the same mentality. I don't want to be here. You know? I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. And when I changed my mindset, once again, the mind is powerful. I started excelling. At the age of 15, I got my provincial colors for Western Cape. And at the age of 16, I got my South African colors. And I traveled the world representing our country before I even matriculated. Mm. There's this Plas Dorp Macy, first language of Afrikaans. Mm. I haven't even traveled out of Cape Town, going internationally representing our country without mm. my parents. That was scary. <laughs> I can't speak English. <laughs> it's not my first language. But again, I was going to do this because it's an opportunity that I was given. So I'm going to give it my all. So I traveled to London, Blackpool, Russia. I competed. And I absolutely, that made me who I am. All my experiences in life gave me the confidence that I have today. So Mrs. South Africa, when that, I could not enter Miss South Africa mm. because I didn't have the education. Um, because with Miss South Africa, education is a big thing. I didn't have the proper upbringing that they do look for. So I could not enter that. I did local pageants at home in Marmesbury. Um, you know, this like, me jyfro biene. <laughs> which is Miss Lex, Mayafra Babluteak, which is Miss Library. So they used to come up keeping in these small towns, keeping the kids busy, keeping you off the streets. They used to come up with all these ideas of having a pageant out of this, a pageant out of that. So I only competed locally in my hometown. I've never, ever did pageants on a national stage. I loved my life. I did many things. I we had baby, we moved to Durban from, from Cape Town, and I saw Mrs. South Africa is up and rising, and it's about women for women, it's about empowering women, it's about giving back. The platform is so much different than to Miss South Africa, and that spoke to me. It's about serving your communities, it's about serving others, it's about so much more than yourself. And I said, I need to do this. And it was never about the crown, it was never about winning. It was about winning within myself. Mm -hmm. It was about challenging myself. It was about growing myself. And it was about being a role model for those kids that sitting in my hometown that don't see Mm -hmm. a way out. That's why I did it. I entered Tammy Taylor, Mr. South Africa. I ran my race. I stayed in my lane. I was a contestant that looked like she was going for the crown. Mm -hmm. But no one knew that I was doing it for myself. I was running my own race. I was with it challenging myself. And the outcome was like the sparkle on the cake, becoming one of the top three. I stood there and I absorbed that moment for a couple of seconds. This just happened, Jan. You've, you've achieved what you did not set out to achieve, but within yourself, you have mastered it. Within yourself, you have achieved. So what is it you think? think made all the difference to propel you to 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 the winner stage 
life skills. It was all about life skills. It's all mm. about my history. It's all about growing up. It's all about what I went through in life. Because mm. once I moved to Cape Town, now I'm out of home. Um, I'm out of this protection bubble. Mm. So Cape Town is new for me. You make stupid mistakes, but I believe that you need to make mistakes. You shouldn't avoid mistakes because how would you learn? Mm. And how would you grow as a person? I got married at a very, very young age because I thought that was my out. Mm. And that was not my out. I got divorced nine months later. After building a home with this man from mm. the ground, I got divorced. But it was not, I didn't see it as a failure. Mm. I saw it, I had the power to walk out. And he was mm. a wonderful man. There was nothing. Mm. It was just not my time mm. to settle. There was so much more to do in life. Mm. And I wasn't done. Mm. And I had the courage to walk out. I had the courage to say, Jan, you made a mistake. Get up, put, put on your big girl panties mm. and go do what you want to do. Go see what it is that you are capable of in life. And I worked for Vodacom at that stage. I met my now husband at Vodacom. Mm. And we only got married three years ago after knowing him for nine years. Mm. Because I needed to make sure if I'm going to take that step again, it needs to be for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. Right. And we had baby three months, three years old at the at the moment, and we got married. So there was nothing right about it, if mm. I can say it that way. I didn't get married when I was supposed to. Mm. I didn't have baby when I was supposed to. Mm. You know, like society puts you in a box and say this is how it's supposed to be done. I was pregnant when I got married, because for us it wasn't about. We knew we were going to spend the rest of our lives together. Mm. So it was more about knowing that we are now a family. No outside pressures. It was about us. And in Shing Tammy Taylor, Mr. South Africa, I came with this whirlwind of life experiences that I could give and share with so many. Mm. And I think that pushed me through. Because through my life, I had to have tenacity. Mm. I had to have perseverance. I had to have the core of survival. Mm. And I think that is what, what pushed me through to top three. So Joanne, looking back over your career, would you say there was one major turning point where things could have gone different? So I left Vodacom because mm. now I met my husband. I left Vodacom and I went to go pursue my then I thought it was my dream. Mm. I went, bought a restaurant, Five Flies, one of mm. the biggest five-star restaurants in Cape Town, 250-seater, fine mm. dining restaurant. I'm not a chef. Mm. I've never worked in restaurants before. Mm. I've never been a waitress. This is all new. Mm. But the bigger the challenge, the more I strive. And mm. that is what I what I realized within myself, this is, this is Jan, you, you, you thrive on stress, you thrive on challenges, mm. and you give your best, the best version of yourself. Mm. And bought the restaurant, thrown in the, I've never owned a business before, so mm. now I needed to learn everything, you know, setting up business plans, going to the bank for money, you know, all of that I needed to learn, mm. read, study educate myself because now remember I did not have an, a degree mm. or university mm. I had a, a secretarial diploma mm. and that was my education mm. and I went into the restaurant industry saying Joanne you're going to make a success of this mindset mind over matter and while I was in the restaurant, I said, Jan, you need to go and study to mm. become a chef. Because how are you going to understand your kitchen if you don't know what they're talking about? Mm. Then I went to go study to become a chef. Mm. So that I can run my kitchen properly and understand mm. the executive chefs. They always say you hire better people than yourself. Mm. And that's what you do because you learn from them. And they know how to run the business. Mm. And my husband then got a position in Durban and we closed shop and we moved mm. to Durban. And I must say, in the restaurant industry, it's when I realized that I'm meant to serve. Mm. Because I was serving people. 
and by serving people I met people and by meeting people I was networking and by networking I was connecting people mm. and that's when I realized this is what you are about as a person. I believe you were running the restaurant for about five years. Correct. So are there any special moments that stand out that you remember fondly? Ah, there's many. We had my husband's 40th. We had murder mystery parties we used to have at, at the restaurant. Um, that was quite, because the restaurant was housed in a historic building. Mm. So it had a lot of history. Um, it, it had the old cobblestone. It mm. had a wall that's as old as the castle. Mm. So there was a lot of history in this building. And the murder mm. mystery parties, when it came together, it's like the spookiness mm. of, you know, it was the perfect place to have it. Mm. Used to have weddings hosted weddings in the restaurant um, and one thing that I must say serving people and seeing the satisfaction on people's faces like wow we are happy we're leaving here happy not just because the food was magnificent but because the service was good because we had somebody that took an interest in how we're doing and I got to know my clients so you would walk in Nick and I'm like how are you doing Nick um, that project that you were talking about last week, mm. how's it going? So I make mental notes of what people tell me mm. and the next time I see them, I bring it up. Mm. And that's how you, how I build relationships or that's how I taught myself to build relationships. Um, yeah, so there were many, many good, the clients, mm. yes, the clients we had. Mm. I had the Judge Lopez, the Helen mm. Zillers. So because we were in the legal fraternity, so I was mm. opposite the, the high court in Cape Town. Right. So I had all of them come mm. and frequent the restaurant. So a lot of stories, yes. So tell us, Joanne, what is driving you today? Today, coming from, from where I do, I must say it's, it's serving, serving, serving mm. our nation, serving our people, mm. giving back of our wisdom, of mm. our of our history, giving back of our mistakes we made, giving back of our education that we have. Mm. That is driving me, serving our nation. So Joanne, serving the nation obviously mm. has a lot to do with leadership. Now let's yes. talk about leadership. What does the future of leadership mean to you? For me, we need to come together. It needs to, for me... As leaders, we need to stand together in unity because no man has ever achieved a lot by, mm. by himself. You need people. And I find that as leaders, if we stand together, we can achieve so much more because you come with a different world of knowledge to me. Mm. I might be good in one area where you are not. And if we stand together and mm. almost build a circle holding mm. hands... I believe that we can go far. Now, what have you learned from your own journey that you consider most important for building future leaders? Sure. Be honest hmm. and true to yourself. Be hmm. honest and true to yourself. And don't forget the bigger picture. Hmm. Don't forget that we need to bring those behind us with. Send the elevator down. Pick up those. Go back to your hometowns. Give back. That is what I've learned and that is what's important to me. And that is what leaders, our future leaders, should be should be doing. Because you get so focused and staying in your own mm. bubble and your lane. And we often block things out that it's not my issue. It's not my problem. It's not mm. that person's going to solve it. The government is going to solve it. Mm. If we're going to carry on like that, this our beautiful nation is going to crumble. Mm. It's going to crumble because we can't depend on government to solve our issues. We, we in business and as leaders, we are the frontliners. We are the decision makers. Mm. We can change lives. We have the ability to do it. We have the resources to do it. Now, Joanne, you're very active in your community. Mm. When you speak to youngsters in your community, what is it you tell them they should focus on for future-proofing mm. their career? Mm. Sure. I, for me, it's quite difficult to give them the formula mm. because there's no wrong and right. It, it depends on your background, mm. what you've been through in life, 
what you're going through in life. But one thing I always tell them is stay focused. Stay focused on your dream. Mm. Stay focused on you as a person and strive to be the best version of yourself mm. always. Now, Joanne, you built a very strong personal brand on social media. So what is your message for future leaders? How should they go about handling social media? How should mm. they go about building their personal brand mm. on social mm. media? The more authentic you are on social media, the better it is. Because authenticity is something that people can pick up on. Authenticity is something that people can recognize. Mm. And be Be one of, of the nation, be one of the people, be one of your audience, be one of mm. your, your, your likers, your followers, be mm. one of them, understand them. Also, when they send you messages, respond. Um, don't become that person that is untouchable. Mm. Be, be somebody that, you, that people can relate to mm. and manage your social media. But from a point of view, I would say, give, give real content. Mm. Because people don't like fakeness. Mm. Be real, stay real. Mm. When it comes to content, what are the lessons you've learned? What content should future leaders focus on when they communicate on social media? It's, it's, for me, it's about also your followers, who you're talking to. So it all depends mm. who you're talking to. Instagram is about, it's instant. It's instant mm. is what I'm doing now. I should be Instagramming this with mm. you, Nick, because now I'm opening up a door for someone else. They're like, oh, Joanna's mm. doing this future forum with Dr. Nick. So, mm. you know, that now they tap into your profile and go have a look at you and say, I want to do that. And they will contact me, such and how was it? You know, mm. educate us on it. So... Future leaders needs to make sure that they relevant, like mm. I said, relevant, and also make sure that they, they give off themselves. Mm. Now, Joanne, you've mentored many youngsters. Mm. Can you maybe share a success story with us where you mentored somebody and that person took your advice to heart? So there's actually a, a woman in Durban, because remember I moved down to Johannesburg in October last year and she's been following my journey and mm. that's the other thing following somebody's journey on social mm. media where you were and where you are now that in its own is motivation to others mm. and sharing your stories and mm. give them the real truth and the hard truth and it was difficult it wasn't easy I'm not going mm. You, you know, be real. Mm. And she actually messaged me. I think I was still in semifinals of Mrs. South Africa. And she said, she's, she's looking up to me. She's going through a very difficult time. And watching me grow and watching that I just had a baby. Mm. And I'm focused on health and I'm focused on exercise and taking care of me. Because if you, your cup is not full, you mm. can't give to others. Mm. And we as women we tend to lose ourselves and it's okay mm. because there's this little person that now needs your attention we as women give to the house give to the husband give mm. to the kids and we tend to forget to give to ourselves mm. and i used to 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 give a motivation i used mm. to tell her look after yourself take care of yourself your kids are looking up to you you mm. know if you're not happy no one will be happy and i kept motivating her mm. i got a message from her saying she's entering tammy taylor Mrs. south africa because i inspired her to go for her dream she mm. is entering even if i talk about it i get gooseies mm. um because there's a woman that was down that was ready to give up on life Mm. And now she's striving. Now she's got a goal. Now she's got her mindset on achieving something. I told her it's not about the end goal, but it's about the growth that she's going to go through on this journey. Mm. And I've never experienced a platform like this before. The Tammy Taylor Mrs. South Africa, it's almost like an MBA of life. The life skills that you learn and all these women that you meet and they share their stories and you share your story and you get... You get empowered and, and you grow as a woman and you go back home and you empower others. So it's got this ripple effect. And I'm honestly, I can't wait to meet her because I've never met her in mm. person. So this was all over um, messages. And I can't wait to meet her when um, we mm. do the callbacks in March. So Joanne, are there any role models of leadership that you would 
recommend future leaders should study and maybe learn from? Mm. Margaret Hirsch has been a big influence in my mm. life. I've done many events with her before mm. and she is one phenomenal woman. She's unstoppable. Mm. And she's just she's just goes. She does not stop. Then she's in this foundation, then she's opening that foundation. I'm Mrs. Hirsch, you then just, she's now studying her MBA. Mm. She is also doing um, swimming laps. She's she's mm. exercising for that. She's not stopping. Mm. That is one woman that I look up to mm. that is relevant in my life mm. at the moment. And future leaders should definitely go study her because they started their business in a garage. Did you know mm. that? In a garage. They're now 40 years old, the Hersh's home right. stores. They celebrated their 40-year mm. um, store opening anniversary. And that is building an empire, mm. but not forgetting the community mm. she gives back mm. all the time and that's how I got involved with subspads mm. is through Margaret Hirsch mm. and now I'm a brand ambassador for subspads through Margaret Hirsch and that's a foundation she started mm. together with Susan Barnes well Joanne where can our listeners follow you and how should they connect with you on LinkedIn Joanne Barnwell and I'm also on Instagram Joanne Barnwell, we keep it simple. And on Facebook, Joanne Barnwell. And last but not least, Joanne, is there one piece of advice that you would really like to convey to future leaders that they should implement in their daily lives? Hmm. Sure, Nick, I need to think about this, eh? Because it's easy for me to sit here and say, if you're a hmm. CEO of a big corporate, those people are under tremendous stress. They are. But I have to say, look back. Right. Send the elevator down. Mm. Fetch others. Bring others along. Go to your communities. Mm. Make a difference and make a change within your communities. Because we need to stretch our hand out. Mm. We need to bring those with us. Mm. Because the only way we're going to survive as a nation is if we stand together. Oh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joanne, for sharing your insights and your wisdom with us and remember, uh, reminding us that unity mm. is the bedrock of any entity, whether it's a family, a community, Literally. a nation. And thank you for all the good work you're doing. Thank you. You're thank making you, a big difference. Thank you, Nick.